Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Miss Mary's live story time. Um, my name is Miss Mary, and uh, today I have some great stories for you. Um, I will start in just a couple of minutes. Um, I want to give people a chance to get in, and of course, as always, say hello in the chat, and I will. Um, be sure to give you a shout out. So again, welcome to Live Storytime. Um, I have some really fun books and a, an interesting theme this week. Um, I see some people are here, so please say hello in the chat and I will give you a shout out. Um, I was thinking maybe this week that I would do like feelings part two, but then I thought maybe that would just be too much feelings. For <laughs> um, so I'm going to save um, feelings part two for future, future story time. Um, because, you know, we read some great books about feelings last week, but it's always, you know, um, there's always more to talk about. So um, that'll be a future story time. If you're here, please say hello. I'm so happy to, um, to have you here. And today's theme is, let me just do really quick, I wanna do something. I wanna just share this to my Miss Mary the Librarian Facebook page, okay. Um, today's theme is stories about the moon. Um, it just, you know, came to be, I found a couple of new books. Again, I was browsing our new bookshelf, which is just um, filled with amazing new titles. And I saw um, two, well, one book is about the, was about the moon and one was called, uh, was about the stars. Um, I'm still going to read it, even though it's not technically the moon, it's space. Um, and then from there I said, I'm going to keep this moon theme. So um, my books for today are all stories about the moon. And I see Margie and Sammy. Hello from the car. I love it. That is dedication. Um, so <laughs> um, please say hello in the chat if you're here. And I will get started with my first book, which I'm actually going to read a book um, that I've loved for a long time. It is certainly not from our new books. Um, but it's a classic, and, um, it's one of the Frank Ash Bear books, and this one is called Happy Birthday Moon. Happy Birthday Moon. Hmm. Moon has a birthday. Interesting. If you're here, please say hello, and, um, if I'm reading my story while you, um, when you type, I will make sure to give you a shout out when I'm done with the book. Here we go, this is Happy Birthday Moon. One night, Bear looked up at the sky and thought, wouldn't it be nice to give the moon a birthday present? Hmm, I never really thought of that. But Bear didn't know when the moon's birthday was or what to get him. So he climbed a tall tree to have a little chat with the moon. Hello, moon, he shouted. But the moon did not reply. Maybe I am too far away, thought Bear, and the moon cannot hear me. Hmm. So Bear paddled across the river and hiked through the forest into the mountains. Okay, surely he's close enough now, right? Now I am much closer to the moon, thought Bear, and again he shouted, Hello! This time his own voice echoed off one of the other mountains. Hello! Bear got very excited. Oh boy, he thought I'm talking to the moon. Tell me, asked Bear, when is your birthday? Tell me, when is your birthday? replied the moon. Now, is it really the moon talking to him? No, it's his echo, right? Well, it just so happens that my birthday is tomorrow, said Bear. Well, it just so happens that my birthday is tomorrow, said the moon. 
What do you want for your birthday? asked Bear. What do you want for your birthday? asked the moon. Bear thought for a moment. Then he replied, I would like a hat. I would like a hat, replied the moon. Oh, goody, thought Bear. Now I know what to get the moon for his birthday. Goodbye, said Bear. Goodbye, said the moon. When Bear got home, he dumped all the money out of his piggy bank. Do any of you have a piggy bank? Let me know. Then he went downtown and bought the moon a beautiful hat. Can the moon really wear a hat? That night, he put the hat up in a tree where the moon could find it. Then he waited and watched while the moon slowly crept up through the branches and tried on the hat. Look! <laughs> Hooray, yelled Bear. It fits just right. During the night, while Bear slept, the hat fell out of the tree. In the morning, Bear found the hat on his doorstep. So the moon got me a hat, too, exclaimed Bear. He tried it on, and it fit perfectly. But just then, the wind blew Bear's hat off his head. He chased after it, but it got away. That night, Bear paddled across the river and hiked through the forest to talk with the moon. For a long time, the moon would not speak to him, so Bear spoke first. Hello, he shouted. Hello, replied the moon. I lost the beautiful hat you gave me, said Bear. I lost the beautiful hat you gave me, said the moon. That's okay. I still love you, said Bear. That's okay. I still love you, said the moon. Happy birthday, said Bear. Happy birthday, said the moon. And that is the story of Happy Birthday Moon by Frank Ash. You do have a piggy bank. That's awesome. I don't have one anymore, um, but I still find ways to save. Um, but piggy banks are so, are, are, I feel like part of childhood, right? Put those coins in. Okay, welcome to live story time, everyone. My name is Miss Mary. Um, if you're just joining in, don't don't worry. We have read one story, but um, you can always watch the replay video. And they're also um, posted on our YouTube channel, the library's YouTube channel. Um, so if you ever want to re-watch a story time that way, you can do that. Please say hello in the comments if you're here, and I'll give you a shout out. Um, so let's keep going with my next story. This was one that I found once I decided that I wanted to do a moon theme. Um, I found this one and I just really liked it. So this is called Mouse and the Moon by M. Christina Butler. Little Harvest Mouse, Mouse lived by himself in a field of grain. Every night, the warm summer breezes rocked his cozy nest, and his friend the moon watched over him from the deep blue sky. See the moon up there? Before Mouse closed his eyes each night, he sang a lullaby to his very own moon. But one evening, a cold wind rustled through the field, and Little Harvest Mouse couldn't see his friend anywhere. Oh no. Mouse peeked out of his net. Did I skip a page? No, okay. Mouse peeked out of his nest. Everything looked so different without the moon's friendly glow. 
trembling, he raced across the field. Someone's stolen the moon, he shouted. Stolen the moon, quacked Duck. I can't believe that. The moon is in the pond, where she always is. In the pond, thought Mouse. That can't be. But he followed Duck as she looked in the water. But the moon was not there. Where has she gone? cried Duck. Now, what was Duck seeing in the water when he saw the moon, when she saw the moon? Let me know in the comments if you know the answer. The moon doesn't live in the pond, said Left Squirrel, who was listening nearby. She's above my nest in the fir tree. The moon doesn't live in a tree, sniffed Duck. She does, said Squirrel. He scampered around every branch, but he couldn't find the moon. She's not here, he called down in a panic. The wind must have blown her away. Rabbit was on his way home when he heard all the fuss. Blown the moon away? He grinned. Never. She was with me in the mountains. The moon doesn't go to the mountains, said Squirrel. Of course she does, stated Rabbit. Then they all dashed after him to find the moon. Little Harvest Mouse searched the sky. Duck looked in every pool and puddle. Squirrel scrambled in and out of trees and Rabbit bounded high and low. But they couldn't find the moon anywhere. As the wind blew stronger, thunder rumbled through the hills. Uh-oh, sounds like a storm is coming. What have you done with my moon, Squirrel? snapped Duck. Rabbit must have lost her, Squirrel whimpered. I've done no such thing, grumbled Rabbit. But what will I do without her, squeaked Mouse. I'll be all alone. Flash, boom, lightning lit, lit, lit up the sky. Crack, crash, thunder clattered over the mountains. Follow me, shouted Rabbit. I know where there's a cave. They raced through the storm and squeezed together in the cave. Um, I'm sorry I snapped, whispered Duck. It was my fault, Squirrel piped up. I shouldn't have blamed Rabbit. No harm done, said Rabbit bravely. At last, the rain stopped and the clouds rumbled away. Look, look, cried Little Harvest Mouse. The clear, dark sky was full of twinkling stars, and peeping out from among them was the moon. It glowed bright over the mountains, glittering through the trees, and shining in the pond. The same moon belongs to all of us, whispered Duck. She never really left us, said Squirrel. Good friends never do, nodded Mouse wisely. And best of all, smiled Mouse, she's given me three new friends. That is the story of Mouse and the Moon. And, oh, okay, the mouse. Well, you know what? Um, when you see the moon in water, like a pond or the bay or the ocean or any kind of water, that's a reflection of the moon. So that is what they saw. Not the actual moon living in the water, but the reflection from the moon. Okay, so again, if you're here for story time, please say hello in the comments and I will be sure to give you a shout out. Today I am reading stories about the moon and let's see this was one of the books from our new bookshelf i was caught by the title and the cover it's the first thing you notice about a book and it's okay to say that but i also really liked the story so this is called margot and the moon landing hold on one second 
my light went off in here. Hold on one second. <laughs> I didn't think I sat still enough during story time for that to happen. It's a motion activated light <laughs> in this room. <laughs> um, Again, if you're if you're a frequent story time watcher, you may remember that while we were still all home and I was doing story times from my couch, there was a time um, for for months I was doing story times and nothing happened. And then one week the doorbell rang five times <laughs> during my story time, um, and I was like, really, <laughs> like nothing ever happens. But this is proof that it's live. Okay, this is Margo and the moon landing. Every day and most nights, Margo read and reread her favorite books. They were all about space travel. Her mother tried to convince her to read different books about robots or gorillas or princesses, but she soon gave up. Margo was only interested in one thing. Whenever Margot learned a new fact, she would share it with everyone she met. Did you know that the first creatures sent to space were fruit flies? She said at dinner. That's nice, said her mother. Make sure to finish all your dal and rice. The first men on the moon were named Neil and Buzz, she told her teacher a little louder than usual, just to make sure she was heard. The teacher was unimpressed. Please pay attention, Margot, he said. We are learning arithmetic right now. Arithmetic is another word for math. During the lunch break, the children went outside to play. Margot brought her books with her. Do you want to join us for kickball, the other girls asked Margot. In outer space, the astronauts eat special food squeezed out of tubes, Margot said, holding open her book in case anybody doubted her. But the girls didn't even look at the page. They had already started dividing up the teams. So Margot clearly has a one-track mind. She loves her space books. Late at night, Margot didn't have to think about dinner or math or the schoolyard. She could read about space until lights out. And then read even later under the covers, shining her blue flashlight on the pages. Fun fact, that is something that Miss Mary used to do after lights out. I would have a little flashlight and <laughs> keep reading. Um, Margot fell asleep wishing she never had to talk about anything other than space ever again. When she woke up, Margot went down to the kitchen where table where her mother was preparing breakfast. Good morning, Margot, said her mother. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Margot had meant to say good morning. Eat your oatmeal, dear, said her mother. Margot tried to ask for a spoon. Houston, Tranquility Base here, the eagle has landed. Hmm. It was no use. Every time she opened her mouth, all that came out were transmissions from Neil Armstrong's 1969 mission to the moon. That's nice, sweetheart, was all her mother said. Hurry up, or you'll be late for school. Margot, please answer the question on the board, said her teacher. For once, she knew the answer. It was an easy question. The surface is fine and powdery. I can kick it loosely with my toe. What? Surely her teacher would realize something was wrong. Instead, he said, Margot, please pay attention. The answer is clearly seven. Throughout the day, Margot grew increasingly frustrated. 
The kids on the playground didn't notice anything unusual during recess. The gym teacher told Margot to pipe down. The school nurse simply gave her a glass of water and then sent her back to class. Margot seems to feel like she's in space. By the end of the day, Margot felt like crying. She went into her bedroom and slammed the door. Margot inhaled deeply, opened her mouth, and let everything gush out. <sighs> right? There is a plaque on the front landing gear of this lunar module. First, there's two hemispheres, one showing each of the two hemispheres of the Earth. Underneath it says, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon. July 1969 A.D. We came in peace for all mankind. That did it. Margot grabbed a marker. She knew she wasn't supposed to write on the walls, but she no longer cared. Writing out her feelings felt good. She kept going. That is a good idea. Every word she scrawled somehow made her feel lighter. Soon a whole wall filled up. Margot got lost in her writing. She forgot about the rest of the world. Okay, here's what she wrote. I'm mad. Nobody listens. Why am I so different from the other kids? I just can't want to read all day. I wish I had friends. I wish people would listen. Everything is dumb. I hate this. School is boring. When her mother came into the room, Margot didn't even notice. Margot, said her mom, what on earth is going on in here? Margot waited for something to happen, but instead her mom got very quiet. She read all the words on the wall and then read them again. And then she wrote, I hear you. Margot started to clean the walls with the corner of her sleeve. Her mom rested a hand on her shoulder. I have a better idea. Margot's mom came back from the basement carrying buckets full, bucketfuls of colorful paint. Together, they transformed the wall into a deep galaxy blue. They added a moon and some stars and even a rocket ship. On the other wall, Margot's mom taped two large sheets of paper. So you'll always have a place on the wall to write your thoughts. I'm hungry, said Margot. Can we have spaghetti for dinner? Margot wasn't exactly sure when her voice came back, but she was glad that she had someone there to hear it. Okay, so this is a very cool story. Um, Margot feels like no one is listening to her and it might just be because like, she's always talking about how much she loves space and fun space facts. But that ultimately led to her being a little angry and feeling like no one, was, no one listened and no one cared her mom came up with a great solution to not only paint her room with some cool stars and a moon and rocket ships, but also create a little space for her, for her to doodle and to write little notes to herself and maybe to write her feelings. So that is a great solution. Never really a great idea to draw on the wall like Margot did. But maybe if you hang up a big piece of paper in your room, you can draw on that instead. So that is Margot and the moon landing. And the fun fact about those is those little words that she was saying when she um, didn't realize that she was, sorry, I, I moved my computer. <laughs> um, when she didn't realize that it wasn't her talking, those were all fun facts about the moon and the moon landing back in 1969. So... I, oh my gosh, I did it again. I'm so sorry. I keep touching my computer and shifting it. Um, I have two books left for today, and I am going to read them both. I know it might take us over just a little bit, but I really like 
both of these, so I don't want to have to pick. <laughs> um, if you're here, please say hello in the chat, and I'll give you a shout out. This one is called The Girl Who Spoke to the Moon, a story about friendship and loving our Earth. And this is by Land Wilson. Sophia was a thoughtful girl who called the moon her giant pearl. As nights passed and the moon would grow, she marveled at its opal glow. One bright night in a dreamy state, Sophia heard a sound quite late. She peeked around at all her toys and wondered which one made the noise. When a beam drew her gaze up high, she saw a face that winked its eye. Hello down there, the moon sang out. I hope to find you peeping out. Hello, moon, she said with a smile. Then they laughed and talked for a while. From this night on, a friendship grew into a bond both strong and true. When her friend was only half in view, Sophia asked, Where's the rest of you? If he was just a crescent moon, she knew that he might vanish soon. Then one time when the moon seemed blue, she noticed that his face was too. Excuse me, moon, what bothers you? There must be something I can do. You need to come and visit me, for there are some things you must see. Late tonight, when you're asleep, dream you'll take a giant leap. She fell asleep, and in her mind, Sophia left the earth behind. Okay, so she's dreaming that she's on her way to the moon. And when she reached the moon in space, she saw a tear run down his face. Now, my friend, that you are here, I'll show you what it is I fear. Take a look at earth with me. Here are the things that you must see. Your mother earth is where you live. She's my closest relative. Also home for nature's wonder. But now she's saddened by real plunder. With dirty waters, land, and air, it looks as though she's in despair. Her people seem so unaware that what Earth needs is better care. I see now why you feel so sad. Polluting Earth is very bad. I'm glad I came to see your moon. Please tell me, moon, what should we do? You all should think of Earth each day and care for her in every way. All the little things you do add up and keep Earth well for you. Then work together and you'll see how wonderful a team can be. When groups of people work as one, the most amazing things get done. Isn't that the truth? Thank you, Moon, for the thoughts you share. It makes good sense. We need to care. I'll tell the world about this dream so we can be a better team. When Sophia woke up from her dream, her cares were different, so it seemed. She made a pledge of things to do, like passing on these words to you. Earth is the only home we know where living things can breathe and grow. Let's work together with a plan and save our world while we still can. By far the gift of greatest worth is our dear home, this planet Earth. And that is the story of the girl who spoke to the moon. Just thought that one was so nice, so nicely done and beautifully illustrated. So this story is my last story. This is the one that's about stars and not quite really about stars so much, but um, more about how... Um, even though we may have differences, we're all really still the same in the end. So this is a beautiful um, new book from our collection called Are Your Stars Like My Stars? And it's by Leslie Halikoski. We look at the world every day, you and me, 
Do we see the same things? Do you see what I see? When you squint at the sky, do you see the same hue? Deep, wide, and open. Is your blue? When the sun gazes down, shining yellow and bold, is it warm, full of sparkle? Is your gold like my gold? When you dig in the dirt, planting seeds in the ground, is it earthy and rich? Is your brown like my brown? Hmm. Do you splash in a puddle when the world is washed clean? Are your leaves fresh and bright? Is your green like my green? Well, your greens look a little different. When you stroll in an orchard, do sweet smells fill your head? Is the fruit bold and flashy? Is your red like my red? Okay, those are different kinds of reds, right? But still red. Does your shadow grow long as the sun starts to sink? Are the clouds soft and rosy? Is your pink like my pink? A little bit different. When your eyes are shut tight, do you peek just a crack? Is the night smooth and sleepy? Is your black like my black? When you stare at the stars, do you see the same light? Does it glow in the darkness? Is your white like my white? Very different whites, right? We look at each other every day, you and me. Do we see the same things? Do I see what you see? So that's all about how we see things differently. We see, you know, colors differently in different places, but we um, are all the same in that we still see things, but we just see them differently from each other. So that is story time for this week. I hope everyone enjoyed the stories and um, please say hello in the comments and I will um, like them later. If you are watching the replay video, um, I hope you enjoy this week's stories. And I will be back next Wednesday with more stories to share with you. And I hope everyone has a great week, um, rest of the week, and stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.